I'm rolling, I'm pulling out a blunt to roll up, and she pulls out an onion. So I'm looking like, what the fuck we finna do with this onion? <laughs> and she literally peels off the first layer of the onion and rolls up two. Do we call them joints? Can we call them joints? I'm shut I, the fuck she up. She rolls up two onion joints. They, it's the, I'm talking about the onion stuck like. Shut up. We smoked it, and she said that's the purest way to smoke weed. For those who don't know, who is Eastwood? Eastwood. Well, I'm going to just tell you how I got my name. Okay. So I was born on the east side of Los Angeles, Memorial Hospital. And I moved to Inglewood, where I played basketball. And I went to Inglewood High School when I uh, was living with my grandmother before she rest in peace. So east side of L.A., Inglewood, California. I put it together, Eastwood, because both sides got love for me. That's how I got my name. That's who Eastwood is. Uh, at what point did you realize this music thing was for real? Uh, it was a party. A few of my buddies was rapping, you know, on the mic to certain death row instrumentals. And um, a Tupac one came on, uh, and I, it was a uh, keep your head up. And I bodied it, and it was like, yo, uh, some guy who was there was a, he was an A and R for Death Row, and he was asking me like, you know, was I signed? And was I interested? And it, it just I, from there, I was like, yo, maybe I could do this. If you could sum it up, can you talk about how you got signed, like through Shug and whatnot? Yeah, I ended up getting kicked out the house where I was staying, and I moved with corrupt, and Shug got out of jail yeah. for. The, the whole Tupac, you know, Biggie right. shit. So he got out of jail. When he got out of jail, he wanted to revamp Death Row and call it the Second Second Dynasty. So he changed it to The Row. And and uh, we was doing an interview at Power 106. Oh, I work there now. Yeah, dope. Damn. Shout out to Power 106. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but we was doing an interview up there. And um, Suge had actually had some folks meet us up there to, to let us know that he wanted to holler. And... We end up going back to the death row office because we didn't even know he was out. And uh, we hollered. And once we hollered, by the time we left, that next day, Suge was sending me uh, a limousine to come pick me up from Damn. Corrupt House to ask me what my mama need, where I want to stay, what kind of car I want. And he just Damn. basically changed my life, you know what I mean, off of hearing about me in the streets. And we did one session. And after that one session, uh, Two days later, the, my death row chain came. Damn. Yeah, and then people didn't even get death row chains. Like, when he got out, it was like a chosen, I would say, seven out of everybody that was right. quote unquote death row. It was only like a chosen seven that had death row chains. You feel me? You talk about not wearing it and your mom wearing it so that you don't mess it up? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 had, I, I just felt like if I if I keep wearing it, you know, I, don't, I didn't want it to devalue itself. Right. I, I wanted to put it up and just, you know, kind of just cherish that, that memory in that moment because me, I'll be moving fast, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to leave it on the airplane, leave it in the jewelry box right. at a hotel, on tour, you know, I, don't, I just, I feel like it's safe with, with moms and protected, you know, with my family. So, you know, I just put it up. Right. But I do got something right, I that my, like, my King Ice dogs looked out for, though. You hey. know what I'm talking about? They looked out for their boy on this one, though. So right. this is, this is it feels good to wear it because I'm an official, you know, death row member. I could really say that. You know what Definitely. I'm saying? Yeah, and it's, it, it, it feels good to actually see death row be looked at in a better light. You know what I'm saying? Not so much of the bullshit or the drama. You know what I mean? Right. It, it, it's... it's, it's uh, I think the people are catching on to the significance of the label versus the bullshit. Right. You know what I mean? And I love it. You know, it feels For good. Sure. So it was it was a blessing. See, what people don't know, too, about this. Now, I'm giving you some, this some exclusive oh, shit. shit. When I was on Death Row, uh, when Left Eye finally came and signed to the label as Nina, um, we worked on her album. And, you know, it was time for her to do her album. And she was going to put it out within the next two months after she signed. And so we had to hurry up and get it done. And Suge asked her who did she want to work on her album with, like right. as far as with writers or whatever and whatnot. And she uh, she said me and Crooked Eye, and, that, and I and I thought that it was hella dope that she threw me in there. Right. You know, with me being a new artist from LA, I didn't know. You know, I right. was I'm just grinding. You know what I mean? Right. And I'm like, yo, to be able to write Left Eye's album right. on Death Row. 
while she's reincarnating herself as Nina Simone, this is this is dope. Right. And and, and I, that was that was a secret. So you know the song Girl Talk, mm -hmm. uh, the TLC, right? That yeah. was their last joint. I wrote her Shut verse up. on it. I wrote that that verse on there. If you go back and listen to it, you'll hear me respond to her in the beginning of that verse. I wrote that verse. That oh verse, the I'll song, is, yeah, the song here. is like, write this shit down. yeah, the song is like 11 million up now, you know what I mean? But, you know, it would have been even more, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's just, people didn't really, they didn't get a chance to market it. They had to shoot a, a cartoon edited video for her part because she passed away. We didn't even get a chance Damn. to shoot the video. You know, this happened right, like, about three days, three days before she passed. That's like what was what was going through your head? I, I I was very hurt. I was hurt. I was I was I was Did more you so. It? I like, was I, I I was I was I was I was I was hurt more so for her her grind and her family. You know what I mean? Because you know she put in so much work and she deserves so much more life to live. You know what I mean? So I was I was just more turned. I was torn for her fans. You know what I mean? I was right. a fan. You know what I mean? Right. So I was. And, and no longer a friend, so Damn, it, yeah, heart yeah, that hurt. Like, that it, that that was a big L for us. But for me to be able to share the front page of the Double XL magazine with her, right, and to write her very last single right. before she passed, and to work on ninety five point nine percent of her album right. with her with her to see her in good spirits and to soak up this game just is is that's 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 i mean i thank her I, right. I thank her i thank her that was a blessing that was a blessing from her and that was a blessing from god and i'm grateful and i'm humbled for that experience right damn what was the best moment you shared with her the best moment i shared with her was when the first the first day we we worked on her album uh I came with the wig, you know, she told me to bring some wig, so we, you know, I got some gas. We finna, right. you know, I, I probably had some Louis, uh -huh. you know what I mean? So we finna roll up and um, I'm rolling, I'm pulling out a blunt to roll up and she pulls out an onion. So I'm looking like, what the fuck we finna do with this onion? Uh -huh. And she literally peels off the first layer of the onion and rolls up two do we call them joints? Can we call them joints? I'm shut I, the fuck she up. She rolls up two onion joints. They, it's the, I'm talking about the onion stuck like. Shut up. We smoked it, and she said that's the purest way to smoke weed in a joint or blunt form. You can have it in a bong. That's a good, very Wait, good pure way. But through no the way. onion, I, we smoked two onions. Why is no one else in the world doing that? I have no idea. I have no idea. I just gave you some game. I'm shut. I just you gave guys you some game. I've actually never did right. it after see? That's that, sketch. but it's, That's I sketch. think I just I don't know. It's like I couldn't see myself going to go buy an onion right. to smoke some weed. It's like the only onions I buy is the whole ounce. We call that, uh, you know, yeah. onions. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's it, though. I right. couldn't see that, but that was I, it. Was different. It was unique. It was it was cool. It, it worked. I, I didn't know if we should brush our teeth afterwards, but it worked. <laughs> it very much so worked. It was pure as fuck. I mean, oh hey, my god! It worked. It was left eye. I was smoking the shit out there. Honey. I'm dead. Yeah. That's like epic. Yeah, it That's is. Epic. Yeah, very historical. Right. <laughs> uh, real quick, since yeah, yeah. on the West Coast, talk about your relationship with the game. Oh, uh, my relationship with the game. Um, the rapper, the game, right? Right. <laughs> um. Yes. Okay. So yeah, I introduced him to Suge. We met at 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 one of uh, one of uh, Suge's best friends' funerals, and. Uh, I was with, you know, Suge, and we was talking and all the artists and all the homies who was there from Compton, from the mob, and uh, I seen Game as I was walking by, uh, coming back from talking to another friend, and he stopped me in my tracks, excuse me, and he asked me, he said, what's up, Eastwood? He said, um, what's up, I'm trying to get out with you and Death Row, you know, if, if possible, I, can you hear me rap right now? You know what I mean? And I was like, shit, I'm, you know, it's a funeral, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm not right now, but you Game can take my that? number. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to give him, I gave him my number. And um, he called me um, the next morning, like around 8 a.m. in the morning. And he rapped for me on the phone. Uh, and and I, when he rapped for me on the phone, you know, I, I thought he was, you know, he was talented. I thought it was something. I saw, I heard something in him. And I said immediately said, okay, well, meet me at the studio. Now, keep in mind, I'm on death row already. 
This is my me, crooked eye, what you, this is what the facts that people know. The same people who was on that double XL, that's who on death row. Right. That's who Suge was rolling with. It's obvious, so you would have seen more faces, right? Right. Cool. Okay, so, 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 so I, um, I introduced him to Suge, and then, um, they, they, you know, they vibe for a minute, and he would come to my sessions, and, you know, uh, eventually he got introduced to D Mac, and D Mac got him with Dr. Dre. Um, but the whole death row circuit, he came, he met that, you know, that whole circle through me. You feel me? And he know we know mutual people that fuck with death row, but he was introduced to that circle through me. You right. feel me? So, and after that, I left death row, and he actually started this Black Wall Street movement. And when I left death row, he, he found out that I left Death Row and he had Tony Martin call me and uh, that was his manager at the time. He called me and he uh, he said that game was on tour doing the How the West Was One tour with Snoop. Right. And this is when he first got with Aftermath and he wanted to start a group called MOB because him and 50 had broke up. You remember you heard about that, right? right you remember yeah. him and 50 broke up, kicked him out of the group, some shit, whatever. Right. Yeah, but he wanted to start a group, you know what I mean? And with me and Technique from Long Beach. and. Um, shit i was like i was doing caltrans at the moment you know right. what i mean so i was like fuck I, i'm you know this is a case i gotta finish this shit up or i'm gonna go to jail but i left i right. just i went on tour and when i came back and went to jail too right i, I locked the fuck up but i did we started a group for i had a little a little robbery case got you yeah but um um but we started a group though so i went and finished up the tour with him we started the group mob it was me him and technique from long beach and uh I don't know, I guess by beefing, what we did do was the G-Unit shit, we shut that shit down. Right. We shut that whole G-Unit shit down because as a yeah. group, you, I mean, the world know about it. We started the G-Unit shit, you feel me? We was touring across the fucking world, beefing with this man and letting the world know this what it is and our mixtapes was selling and going crazy, you know, doing a million units and shit like that. And it was like, damn, these are just mixtapes. So we made hella noise. And G Unit ain't sold the same since. Right. You feel me? And that was our I, I hate to say it, that had to be our legacy together, but that's that's what we did together, you know, when I personally feel like it it should have been more and it still can be more with the with me knowing him now. Right. But at the end of the day, um we cool, you know, we we brothers, you know, brothers don't see eye to eye all the time, right. but we still cool, so we straight. Right. Mm -hmm. What was your relationship with Clark? Um, it was I met I just met him you know uh, at the Fox Hills Mall with my family uh, a couple times and then uh, it was after that we did music after he passed he had records that Suge wouldn't let nobody on right. and um, I was blessed to do a record with him you know what I'm saying and and just that was it it was he passed you know short he had a short life you know he was young 26 he he died when I was a young buck and. It was just the the impact he had on me in such a short time was memorable. I'll never forget it. Right. Damn. I guess last question, what's been going on with you? These guys what Well, you I you know, um I definitely I, I definitely been putting out more music lately because my fans been on my head. Um I've been like really into movie scripts and T V shows and you know, I've been really in that acting field but my, you know, my music fans, they won't let me go away. So I've been putting out more music. I got an album out. Uh, it's called um, Valleywood uh, with me and my boy Wacko the Kid. Um, I got Where back to from? the, he's from the Valley, 818. Okay. I got back to the basics out right now you know, um, on all digital uh, platforms. And I'm working on a special one right now. I'm about 99.9% .9 done. It's my album. And it's called uh, the Problem Child, and that's what they used to call me on Death Row. Oh, shit. So this is gonna be like, no you know, yeah, this going this is a personal Why album. Why are you the Problem Child? I, I think the name speaks for itself. Right. I, I was young and wild, and I was like, I was, you know, clubbing heavy and fucking up and getting into it with 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 with, with niggas at the club and just wilding out and keeping the gun on me, catching stupid cases, riding, you know, just running from the police and I'm on death row so it was like what the fuck are you doing you right. know I was just wild I just I felt untouchable you right. know what I'm saying but yeah the judge got to me and I was touchable right. so I slowed my eyes down but right. the problem child by me having that name at that time I feel like I want to give back just like you you know right now it's a whole death row uh, fad going on you know you see what's going on the death row wave is you know that shit is just surfing because you know 
it's death row. You know, right. it's, it's so real that you know history never dies. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's so too it's, it's too fucking real. So now I just feel like, damn, I'm really an affiliate. Let me give back to those fans, the one and the ones that don't know me, which is now, and the ones that still trying to get to know me. Let me give back to them in one project. And I'm gonna call it the problem child because that's what started me. That's this the body of work that I believe in and I gave it my all and I know for a fact it's gonna be a game changer for me. Right. So th right now the problem child is my it's my baby, but I do got Valleywood and back to the basics out now so people can go grab that ASAP. Uh, on all digital platforms, but Problem Child is coming next, and it's my baby right here. So be ready for that. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a nice one. It's gonna be a hell of a vibe. I got Dennis G. Shout out to Drake Pops. Dennis oh, G. He just... did, yeah, he did my intro. Aww. Yeah, he did my intro to the album, so I thought that was special too. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, he's a, he's a believer because he remember you know those death row days himself. Right. Yeah. It's Yo, a blessing. Is there anything else you wanna let us know? Um. Yeah, I just want to uh, send another shout out to King Guys for the Death Row Chain, hey. and uh, I'd like to send a shout out to you for the dope interview. Hey. You feel me? Thank Keep you. going. Shout out to Power One Hundred Six, man. I'll be seeing y'all next, and um, you know the whole staff, man, the whole King Guys staff, everybody, man, who involved with this Death Row movement and all that. You know, I just, I just want to, you know, send positive energy, mm -hmm. and just, you know, it, it, I want to play a part, whatever part that I can, to make sure that the world understand that this is not just made up, that it's real and you guys are attached to, you know, real people that right. really live this death row life because people die for it. Right. So, you know, it's not to be played with. For sure.